In this video, I'm gonna talk about the M-Series Mac that I am most looking forward to this year, the 16-inch MacBook Pro. I'm talking M1X, mini LED, USB 4, maybe even an all new design with Face ID. And I'm doing this for just every Apple product coming this year so you can better decide what you wanna buy and when. So hit that subscribe button and bell and let's do this. Sponsored by Skillshare. There are two possibilities when it comes to the 16 inch MacBook Pro design. And I'm really curious to hear which of them you think Apple is gonna go with. The first is nothing. Nothing and more nothing. That's what Apple did last year with the first round of Apple Silicon with the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro, and the Mac Mini. All of them, brand shiny new silicon hearts, same old bead blasted aluminum bodies. That let Apple keep things simple though, have a known thermal target to design for, and also keep a redesign in their back pocket for the next round of updates. The second is everything. Just the long awaited, long rumored MacBook redesign we've been hearing about for a couple years now, and which everyone assumes will translate into even smaller bezels and an even sleeker, sexier chassis. But since Apple already Thanos snapped the bezels in the 16 inch model when it debuted just over a year ago, I think it's entirely possible they will stick with it for just a little while longer, especially because it's hard to see what a substantive redesign for the MacBook Pro would even look like right now. Apple's mostly been in refine mode for over a decade, just iterating on that same basic design, going unibody, going thinner and lighter, always thinner and lighter, getting that squared off industrial design everyone wants to see come to the iMac, keeping everything just really ultra simple. Everything except for the touch bar, which I'll get to soon, and multi-touch. So while I really do want to see an updated design for all of the MacBooks, including and especially the 16 inch, I'm only gonna expect it when I see it. The 16 inch MacBook Pro already has a pretty damn great display. Retina density, P3 wide color gamut, true tone dynamic color matching, and a refresh rate that you can toggle between 48 and 60 Hertz. So your movie-like or TV-like video and editing will look properly movie-like or TV-like. But the big rumor for the next generation is mini LED. Yeah, mini LED, not OLED. Because OLED not only still has just a bunch of issues like smearing, off-axis color shifting, pulse width modulation, burn-in, and consistent brightness, it still has issues with yield and scale, even for phone size panels, never mind bigger than phone size panels. What mini LED does though, is use thousands of tiny 200 micron LEDs grouped into local dimming zones, and that lets them get blacks almost, if not quite as deep as OLED, and contrast ratios that should be close to, if not full on OLED level HDR, high dynamic range. Not just for all the Hollywood content we're getting now, but even for the iPhone 12 that can shoot in Dolby Vision now. What hasn't been rumored, but what I'd love to see as well is moving those 48 Hertz and 60 Hertz static refresh options into just full on adaptive ProMotion, which is the iPad Pro technology that dynamically ramps all the way down to 24 Hertz to save on power for things like static images, but all the way up to 120 Hertz for super smooth scrolling and high frame rate gaming. But I expect Apple's worrying about getting that on the iPhone before they even begin to worry about getting that on the Mac. The only other thing that's interesting and out there is a nano texture option. That debuted in 2019 with the Pro Display XDR, but is now also available on the 27 inch iMac. It reduces glare without losing as much contrast as old school matte coatings. But while it's great on a desktop, where you might not be able to position your display to avoid glare, you need to be really, really careful to preserve the texture. And that sounds like just all shades of problematic on a laptop where the screen might get touched a lot. But let me know what you think about it in the comments. I'll get to the M1X in a thermally hot minute, but I've also been thinking a lot about the radios. The current 16 inch MacBook Pro does not have Wi-Fi 6. No Intel Mac does. It's almost as though Apple was waiting on their own silicon to bring Wi-Fi 6 to the Mac because that's exactly what they did with the M1 Max. So at the very least, the 16 inch MacBook Pro will be getting Wi-Fi 6 with the M series processor. At the very least, because for just a variety of performance reasons, I'm personally waiting on the next generation Wi-Fi 6E. Just think about it like the Enterprise E, the same, only better because that's the one that'll not just be issue free, but work over six gigahertz. And since Apple has been just always super aggressive about adopting new Wi-Fi technologies, I'm holding to hope that that'll apply here as well. As to 5G cellular networking on the Mac, well, that's something Apple didn't deliver with the M1 
or the MacBook Air or the lowest end MacBook Pro. And the MacBook Air arguably is where it might shine the most. I still love to see it as an option, even if Qualcomm would make it a really, really expensive, expensive option. But it's just another one of those things on my list of only expecting it when I see it. Same with the U1 or ultra wideband spatial positioning chip. Apple has been moving that just across the entire higher end iOS lineup for over a year now. And it'd be great to see the Mac get in on that object aware action. We've seen the M1, we've seen what's basically an A14X with some Mac specific IP for things like virtualization and translation acceleration and onboard Thunderbolt controllers. We've seen what that can do on the entry level MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. And that's pretty much just blow the doors off almost every other processor and embedded graphics system in the business. And I've done an incredibly deep dive on why that is and how M1 works. And I'll link to that in the description. So just what does Apple do to up that M series ante even further for the 16 inch MacBook Pro? And my guess is the same thing they've been doing with the iPad Pro for years now, and that's throw more cores at it. Right now in M1, we have four efficiency cores, four performance cores, eight graphics cores and 16 neural engines. Early rumors and speculation have suggested that Apple would go to eight performance cores for the M1X. More recent rumors, as many as 12 or even 16 cores and up to 16 graphics cores as well. Now, adding cores does nothing to increase single core speeds. That's what affects things like interface responsiveness and app launching. But Apple already has just some of the fastest single core performance in the industry. So the bigger thermal envelope of the bigger 16 inch unibody and active cooling system might encourage Apple to clock the cores up just a little bit faster and let them run full out for a little bit longer. But at this point, that's just gonna be frosting. But all those extra cores will just really ramp up performance for any application that is multi-core aware, including things like Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro. As to whether or not Apple does anything with discrete graphics, as opposed to sticking with a system on a chip and unified memory, Johnny Saruji, the senior vice president of hardware technologies at Apple, said we'd be getting a family of SOCs with what's now known as the M series. So an SOC is really all that I'm expecting. And honestly, as long as performance is there, Embedded versus discrete is just an implementation detail. When it comes to Apple meeting or beating Nvidia and AMD, I don't particularly care how they do it. I just want them to do it. For memory, M1 only has eight gigabytes and 16 gigabyte options, but we've come to expect 32 and even 64 gigabytes on the higher end MacBook Pros. And again, like with the graphics, I don't particularly care if that memory is onboard or offboard. I just want it as an option. My biggest question is whether or not we could see something like Afterburner, that's the car that Apple introduced with the Mac Pro, a reprogrammable ASIC that just accelerates the hell out of ProRes. Because right now, Apple has H.264 and H.265 encode and decode blocks on the M1. But as far as I know, ProRes still hits the CPU. Bigger MacBook may be a bigger potential shift into something like Afterburner. That's also why I don't think Apple will use just any of the savings from the M series chips over the Intel chips to drop the prices on the MacBook Pro. I think instead Apple will spend that budget on paying down the M series just as fast as possible. And then on adding even more newer, more advanced technologies like mini LED and maybe even like face ID. The current 16 inch MacBook Pro has a T2 chip, a variant on the A10 SOC to basically work around just everything Intel's core series hasn't been good at. And that includes real time encryption, signal processing, acceleration, and more, including touch ID. The M series does all of that already. It's just built in onboard secure enclave, all of it. So no more T2 chip needed, but it also has a full on a &E, an Apple neural engine, which just happens to be what face ID depends on as well. And as much as I like touch ID, the idea of just lifting the lid on a MacBook pro and having face ID see me is like full on force powers. It would yes, totally require getting a true depth camera array, which would probably mean finally getting a decent camera on the MacBook pro but would also require a redesign to fit that camera array into the lid, which is currently so thin, it probably can't fit anything approaching a decent camera, much less an array. Personally though, I would take a notch. I would take a camera bump, anything at this point. I just want it, but let me know what you want in the comments. Now, I know for some people that is immediately gonna be multi-touch, multi-touch on the Mac. Apple says they're not doing it, which means either they're really not doing it or they're just gonna keep saying they're not doing it, not breathe a word about it until it's ready to go at launch and they do it. I have a whole video up where I argue every pro, every con about multi-touch Macs with Daring Fireball's John Gruber. So check that out for more. 
Until then though, we seem to be stuck with the touch bar. And I say stuck because Apple introduced it in 2016 with fanfare, but haven't iterated on it at all since then. Like at all, not even adding Taptics. And that's a shame because it does surface just a ton of shortcuts and could potentially make all of us much more productive. Until then, we're gonna have to rely on Thomas Frank and his new productivity class, where he teaches us how to build sustainable habits without feeling like a failure, which honestly has something that's always been a struggle for me. Thomas goes through his research, his experiences, and his own trial and error, and lays out the groundwork for lasting habits, which is just so important right now, when so many of us are wondering what's going on, what's even happening next, and are looking for any way to create something, some sort of structure, meet some set of small goals, so we can regain a sense of accomplishment and control. And that's the real power of Skillshare. It isn't just one class, even several classes. It's an entire online learning community that offers membership with meaning and with an annual subscription that's less than $10 a month. And there are classes on illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more with real projects to create and the support of real fellow creatives, more than 7 million of us learning with Skillshare. And the first 1,000 of you who click on the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. Yeah, free. So act now and start learning today. Yeah, free. So act now and start learning today. And clicking on that link just really helps out the channel. For more on M1 and just all of the upcoming Macs, click the playlist above. I'm reviewing and previewing every new Mac Apple's making. So click that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.